Good morning, everyone. I am making you a video for the final six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the final five examples of the notes that go with multiplying polynomials. I know we had started this well, quite some time ago. I want to say the Tuesday before we left for break. So the first five examples might not be fresh. You might want to read over some and look at your notes before you start uh, this next set. But the, actually the video from Ms. Callahan is extremely long and I figured I would be able to still get the same information across to you just in a shorter period of time. So if you would have your binders out and go to page 520, Okay, again, when you take notes from a video, you need to actually take your notes. I know that people at home do that, but some of you, when you watch these videos that are made for you in class, you never actually take notes, you just watch the video. So please get your binder out, page 520, like I said, you can even see my little squiggly line from last time we were here and we, we stopped at example six. So remember, and, and this is about to, probably really confuse you because when we had a question like this on the exponents you did something like this where you distributed the two back through and i'm about to tell you that you cannot do that and again the reason why and it almost feels like unit five is a reading test even though there's hardly any writing you need to pay attention there is a big plus sign here and I cannot send this two back through and square everything because technically I need to add these together. And remember, order of operations says that I should simplify first inside my parentheses. And I know you can't technically simplify these, but if you knew what X was, you could. So I cannot do something like this. So imagine if this was, 2x times 3. Again, I wouldn't write it like that. I would just make it a 6x, but imagine that's what was here. Well, then yes, you could send this back through or you could simplify and then I could square everything, but that's because there was no plus sign. There's a big plus sign here, okay, which says I need to square this. And remember, and maybe you want to think about the long way of doing these questions, this essentially means I have two 2x plus threes. And now, hopefully it looks like a question we did from above, example five on the past couple pages. So a refresher, remember, I'm gonna take the first thing and multiply it by the first thing there. 2x times 2x is a 4x squared. Then we have to multiply the 2x by three. 2x times three is a 6x. I'm done distributing this. Remember how I called these questions double distributing? Well, I've only distributed once. Now I'm going to do my second distributing. 3 times 2x is another 6x, and 3 times 3 is a 9. I should add like terms. 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 would be my final answer because I cannot simplify anything else because the variables, although they are the same, have different exponents. And you can only add to add or subtract like terms that have the same variable and exponent. Now, example seven should actually be a quick change for you because I've talked about this before. You are going to distribute this to everything. Well, everything now happens to be three terms. So the only change to seven from what we just did in example six right here is that I actually have to distribute this X a third time. Everything else is the same. X times X squared is an X cubed. X times 4X is a 4X squared. X times a negative 3 is a negative 3X. I'm done distributing the X. Now I have to double distribute, but this time I have to distribute the 2. Well, 2 times X is a 2X squared. 2 times 4X is an 8X. And 2 times negative 3 is a negative 6. Now again, you should always simplify automatically. I, I never want to have all of these terms that are this that, that can be simplified and combined. I should simplify and combine them. So start with the highest power. X to the third has no other like terms. Done with it. 
anything with an x squared. 4x squared and a 2x squared. Well, 4 plus 2 is a 6x squared. Anything that has an x, 8x and a negative 3. Well, 8 minus 3 is a 5x. And then my negative 6 has no like term, so I add that at the end. And here's my final reduced, simplified, perfect answer. Okay? Descending order. Highest variable first, then the next highest, then the lowest, no variable. And I have only one of each variable and exponent. That would be a perfectly written final answer. Example eight. Looks hard. Again, I swear example or uh, unit five is almost more of a reading test. And how much do you understand? What can you comprehend in levels of algebra one? Well, in algebra one, example eight here, I need to find the area of a rectangle. If you're in ninth grade or 10th grade and you're in algebra one, you should know that the area of, the, of a rectangle is length times width. So when I multiply the length, it's a quantity. Remember when we did this back in unit one, I said, I highly recommend any quantity I would put in parentheses. I need to multiply all of the length. Well, the entire length is seven X plus 10. And then I need to multiply the entire width and the entire width is four X plus eight. So to find the area, I would take seven X plus 10 and I would multiply it by four X plus eight. And look at this, when I write it out, it almost looks like a question from above. Imagine that we're in the same unit. I have to multiply these together. Seven X times four X is a 28 X squared. Seven X times eight is a 56 X. I'm done. This is a double distributing question. The reason I see that is because there's an implied multiplication sign there. If it was a plus sign or a minus sign, this question would be completely different, but I am multiplying. I'm done with the 7x. Now I need to distribute the 10. 10 times 4x is a 40x. 10 times 8 is an 80. I'm not finished yet until I've added like terms. My area is going to be equal to 28x squared. 56 and a 40, I can add those together. That would give me a 90x plus 80. Okay, we've got two more examples. You might think this video is long, so much shorter compared to Miss Callian's. I'm not saying anything about Miss Callian. She makes great videos. She's given me less work to do because I can use her videos but some of her videos are very lengthy and I just wanted to shorten this a little bit. I also wanted to put everything in the same place so that some of her videos don't match up with what we did over Thanksgiving break. So if we look at example nine here, my goal is to find the area of the brick patio. So uh, your packet kind of, kind of probably looks like mine where you can't really see what the heck is the brick patio. That's, that's this in in the background and if you remember especially by block one students i actually went through an example of trying to explain something before thanksgiving how this is like a legitimate scenario now the x is it depends how good you are with masonry and carpentry and things like that but there are people out there who have they're about to put a patio in and they want a fireplace in the middle of it and like the cool thing to do nowadays is to put the fireplace right inside because you don't want to waste the space of it having to be elevated and, and it's coming out of the ground. So you actually kind of make it level with the ground. And, in, and to do that, you actually have to dig in or you don't put certain things like maybe brick on that initial layer so that it's lower. So this is legitimate. Someone is, they're putting out a brick patio, but they're like, well, I want to put a fireplace in. And so they, a fire pit or something. So they put the fire pit in and they don't necessarily know the dimensions. That's where the X comes into play. And so this is what you're, you're trying to find out. Well, how much now I need to go buy brick, but brick is expensive and I don't want to buy brick that I'm not going to use. So I want to make sure I have an accurate area that is going to be brick. So if you think about this, I would find the area of the big rectangle. I'd find the area of everything, my entire patio. How big is it going to be? Well, to do that, I would do length times width. So I could do 3x plus 7 times 3x minus 1. I'd have to multiply those together. But then I would subtract the area of the small rectangle, right? I would take the area of the patio and I would subtract how big, how much area the fire pit's going to take up. 
So I need to subtract then x times 2x plus 5. So I almost have like two questions. I've got to multiply those. I've got to multiply these. And then I need to subtract them. So let's just break this down. Let's do one thing at a time. Multiplying the first here. 3x times 3x is a 9x squared. 3x times by a negative 1 is a negative 3x. 7 times 3x is a 21x. And 7 times by a negative 1 is a negative 7. Now I can combine like terms and I get 9x squared plus 18x minus 7. Now, and I drew this arrow, I was a little off. This minus sign definitely needs to come down here. So I need to subtract the entire small area. And this is where things get tricky. Well, when I distribute here, x times 2x is a 2x squared, and x times 5 is a 5x. That's not the tricky part. The tricky part is the fact that I need to subtract the entire area. Well, the entire area, if I write this like this, this is wrong. Am I subtracting the entire area? No, all I've chosen to do is subtract the 2x squared. I need to subtract all of this. How can you do that? If you use parentheses. And now it looks like a question that you probably had to do on the quiz today. Distribute your negative one, rewrite what you have, nothing changes, negative 2x squared minus 5x. Now I can combine this into a final answer. 9x squared minus 2x squared is a 7x squared. 18x minus 5x is a 13x. And the negative 7 has no like terms. So we just write that at the very end there. All right, last question. It is a doozy. It's a, it's a big question, OK? Mainly because I'm asking you to do two different things. So I want you to find the surface area, but I also want you to find the volume. Uh, believe it or not, volume is going to be easier. And in fact, I would almost kind of split up your paper how I'm about to here. You need a lot of room for surface area. You don't need that much room for volume. So we're going to do volume down here. Now, remember, volume is length times width times height. And we've done similar questions to this in class where I tell you, if this was 2 times 4 times 5, I wouldn't expect you to do all that in your head really quick and get the answer of 40. I would expect you to do two times four and get eight, and eight times five is 40. Same idea here. Let's let the length be x plus two, the width be x plus one, and the height is x minus two. It would be insane for me to ask you to be able to multiply all three of those things at once, right? So here's the length, here's the width, here's the height. I wouldn't expect you to do that. I would do two things first. Get your answer, multiply it by the other thing. So let's do that. Let's multiply two things first. Ignore the x minus 2. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is a 1x. 2 times x is a 2x. And 2 times 1 is a 2. And so I end up with x squared plus 3x plus 2. Good. That's what I got from the first set. Now I still need to multiply that by an x minus 2. Now this, the way I have it written, does not look like what we did in example seven. But it does look like example seven, but just backwards. So you can either backwards distribute, you can distribute this way, but then you would actually have to triple distribute, which I wouldn't really recommend, or because two times five is the same as five times two, we can just rewrite this as put the binomial in front and put the trinomial in the back. And now it's exactly like example seven. In fact, the numbers are pretty close to example seven. Okay, so same idea. I have to double distribute x times x squared, x times 3x, x times 2. Well, x times x squared is an x cubed. x times 3x is a 3x squared. x times 2 is a 2x done with the x. I'm distributing a negative 2. Negative 2 times x squared is a negative 2x squared. I'm just going to write these below. Negative 2 times 3x is a negative 6x, and a negative 2 times 2 is a negative 4. Here are all my terms that I got when I multiplied. Now I have to add any like terms. Well, there are no like terms with the x cubed. I have a 3x squared and a negative 2x squared, and a 3 minus 2 gives me a 1 
x squared. 2x minus 6 gives me a negative 4x. And my negative 4 has no like terms. And so now I have my volume. And believe it or not, that is significantly easier, less steps. Maybe not easier math, but less steps than finding the surface area. That's because if you remember correctly, and I think you've probably talked about surface area before, you just might not remember it. It's when you sum up the areas of all surfaces. It kind of makes sense, right? Surface area. So I need to add all the areas. Well, if I, I have to think about this. Some questions are easier than others. This is a rectangular prism, which means the front and the back are going to be the same. The right side and the left side are going to be the same. And the top and the bottom are going to be the same. So I can actually shorten this question a little bit. I, have, I know that the front and the back will be the same. The front and the back, to find this piece, I would do length times by the height. So I would do, for the front and the back, I would do x plus 2 times x minus 2. Good. That would give me the front. And then I would have to multiply all of this by 2 to get the back, because I have two of those. Then I have the left and right. And to get the left and the right side, I would have to do the width times the height. So that would be x plus 1 times x minus 2. But similarly, because I have two of these, I have the right side, I've got the left side, I would multiply that by 2. And then I would take the, so I did the front and back, left and right, top and the bottom. And to get the top and the bottom, to get the bottom here and the top, I would do length times width. So x plus 2 times x plus 1. And again, two sides. So when I would get the area of one of those things, I would multiply by 2 to get the area of the other. And then remember, to sum up all sides, I would then add those together, and that would give me my surface area. So you can see it's going to start to take up a lot of room. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to use a different color. That might help. I'm going to do my best to kind of keep these organized. So the first thing I would do is I would, again, follow my order of operations. I've got to multiply the inside. So x times x is an x squared. x times negative 2 is a negative 2x. 2 times x is a positive 2x. 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4. I need to add my like terms. My like terms here actually happen to cancel out. And so I end up with x squared minus 4. Now this, I still need to multiply by the 2. And I'll get there in a second. But I, I ran out of room, and I really don't want to squeeze it in. So I still need to multiply that by 2. Bottom, x times x is an x squared x times by a negative 2 is a negative 2x. 1 times x is a 1x. And 1 times negative 2 is a negative 2. Add my like terms. x squared negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1x minus 2. And again, for the left and the right side here, I only found 1. So I still need to multiply that by 2. And then for the top and the bottom, x times x is an x squared. x times 1 is a 1x. 2 times x is a 2x, and 2 times 1 is a 2. Add my like terms. 1x plus 2x is a 3x. This still needs to be multiplied by 2. So I have a little bit more work to do yet. So off to the sides, I'm now going to do this in green. And I am going to do this with a little bit amount of work, because you should also be able to do this with a little bit of amount of work. I need to multiply this by 2. What it looks like is this. That's something you can do in your head. 2 times x squared is a 2x squared. And 2 times a negative 4 is a negative 8. All I did was multiply it by 2. Same thing here. I want to multiply this by 2. So 2 times x squared minus 1x minus 2. Again, everything has to be multiplied by 2. Well, 2 times an x squared is a 2x squared. 2 times a negative 1x is a negative 2x. 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4. And then last thing, same idea. This has to be multiplied by a 2 yet. 2 times x squared is a 2x squared. 2 times 3x is a 6x. 2 times 2 is a 4. 
And remember, remember these plus signs? Because I got to sum up all the areas. I need to add all those up. See, now you understand why this is a long problem. I have a bunch of like terms. I've got to add them all together. 2x squared plus a 2x squared plus a 2x squared would give me a 6x squared. No x. I've got an x here, negative 2x and a positive 6. Well, negative 2 plus 6 is a positive 4x. And now I add up my cosines. The 4s actually cancel out the negative 4 and the positive 4, so I'm left with a negative 8. And so now I have my surface area. That's a tough question, but I would start it because I will tell you right now, it is on the test, right? You do need to be able to do something like that where you have to find the surface area and the volume. Start it right now. And if you have any questions once this video is over, you gotta ask me, okay? Now, there's only one of these to practice in our notes, and then I think there's only one in the review, so you'll see them. But uh, just make sure you look into that. And uh, there will most likely be some picture problems like example nine and things like that, but I'm, I'm telling you right now, this will be on the test. Okay, so again, I know that video was still kind of long, but I was hoping to make it shorter than Ms. Callahan's, and as long as it is shorter than 32 minutes, I think I did so. so uh, I hope you got everything you need. Make sure you take those notes and we'll be good to go from there.